Welcome aboard the Besetto Express. We'll cover three countries. Bay, Beijing in China. Sei, Seoul in Korea. And To, Tokyo in Japan. Together, we'll explore the culture of Besetto. All aboard the Besetto Express. Alcohol may have existed on Earth before humans. Alcohol has spirited humans for centuries, sometimes doubling the joy and sometimes consoling the sorrow. Alcohol has developed unique drinking cultures in every country. In Japan, alcohol was believed to be a possession of the gods, so Japanese people say they drink wine to get drunk with the gods. Because Japanese people lay importance on not harming others, their drinking culture pushes moderation. China has the oldest drinking culture among the three Beseto countries. Various methods of drinking have developed, and most people like to enjoy their drink in a loud atmosphere. In Korea, there is a proverb that goes, if you want to know the inside mind of a person, drink with him. As such, drinking occasions are a time when people share their thoughts and loves. But there are strict rules and manners in Korea's drinking culture. Well, let's find out the differences between the drinking cultures in the three Beseto countries. Welcome to Besetto Express. In the Orient, people lay great importance on the rules and manners of drinking alcohol. However, many people have enjoyed alcohol since a long time ago. But humans weren't the only ones that enjoyed alcohol. In an old Japanese saying, it says, there's no god that hates alcohol. Well, today, we're going to find out the different drinking cultures of the Orient. <laughs> We'll visit with Korea first. Records on alcohol dating back as early as the first century BC can be found in Korea. Like with most countries, the spirits of Korea are rooted deeply with the gods. Alcohol was often used in sky-worshipping ceremonies. As various types of spirits developed from the 3rd and 4th centuries, types for the common people became very popular. A simple and comfortable drinking culture began to form. The same was true for the aristocratic class. In the 12th and 13th century, drinking manners, similar to that of the modern day, began to appear. Since drinking is considered something to be learned from one's elders in Korea, young adults learn the various manners through such occasions. A unique drinking culture can be seen at weddings. The bride and groom are pronounced real husband and wife by sharing a glass of traditional wine. The first greetings to the groom's parents are also done by offering wine. The elder receives the wine first, and the younger receives after. Such wine drinking customs are still followed today. If you visit Korean taverns, you can easily find the unique drinking culture of Korea. In Korea, alcohol must be poured by someone else. If one wants to express his feelings of friendship to the other, he must fully empty his glass. <laughs> this shows Korea's traditional belief in sharing everything with others, which developed from their agricultural society. Such traditions continue in the unique drinking cultures of today. But why is the same glass being passed around? 그러니까 우리 공동체 문화라고 하는 그 정의 문화가 그 술잔 속으로도 예, 우리는 둘이 아니다라고 하는 그래서 항상 
자기 모든 것을 보여주기도 하고 너희 것도 보여달라는 의미로서 예. 이런 의미에서 우리는 술잔을 이렇게 주고 받는 가식이 없다. 완전히 나는 너에게 열 마음을 다 열었다. 이런 의미도 있고. Even in this present day, drinking manners are kept as strict as the old days. So special attention must be paid when drinking with an elder person. If an elder pours you a drink, you must hold your glass with two hands and you must turn away to drink. You must also pour with two hands, with the right hand leading. Such traditions are the same when drinking wine with friends, and age is not relevant. Friendship deepens while offering drinks to each other in times of special occasions and birthdays. With such traditions, a new drinking culture of the young generation is also appearing. Japan took in traditional alcohol producing methods from China through Korea. Japan's drinking culture can be well observed in the traditional paintings and old drawings of Japanese women. In Japan, the land of the samurai, wine was something only for men. Gisang were invited to heighten the atmosphere of drinking occasions. This theatrical play you are seeing now is a performance of Japanese traditional stories that tell morals related to drinking. You can discover Japan's drinking culture through this entertaining play. Drinking cannot be left out of Japanese wedding ceremonies. In traditional weddings, a clear, strained rice wine called chongju is used. However, nowadays, Western champagnes are becoming popular. In Japan, the drinking houses of the common people called the Ichakaya are still open today to serve customers. In the Ichakayas, which tell people to come without worry about money since it's cheap, waiters are dressed in traditional clothes. They even wear the Geda shoes. It makes you feel like you've traveled back in time. Attracted by their unique and comfortable atmosphere, many Japanese people come to such places after work. A unique drinking culture of Japan is Chengju. You hold your glass on a plate and pour until it overflows. Passed on from China, Chengju is usually drank warm in the winter. After drinking just a bit, the glass is refilled. Another unique drinking method is used when the glass is hot or if it is too full to drink. Instead of using the hands, the liquor is drunk by moving the mouth to the glass. Since Japanese taverns don't have special age preferences, people of all ages can be found in the same place. When proposing a toast, there's no obligation to finish your glass. To show respect to the other person, you should fill up the glasses of others before they are emptied. This is opposite to the Korean way. In Korea, one must wait for the glass to be completely empty. Let's find out about the drinking culture with the longest tradition, the drinking culture of China. China has a 5,000-year-old history of drinking. 
drinking was initially done to offer wine to the gods. Through the years, alcohol has created a unique culture and influenced many other traditions as well. Drink was influential on poets and writers who left great works behind. As alcohol penetrated deeply into the lives of the common people, it became a necessity at special occasions such as weddings. Wine is offered not only to the bride and groom and their parents, but to all guests. And drinking the wine in one gulp has become a symbol of congratulating the newlyweds. Usually fruit or rice wine, which is low in alcohol, is offered to the women. The method of pouring wine is also unique. A chopstick is used to pour the wine by connecting it between the wine glass and wine bottle. Generally, beer is drank the most, and when pouring beer, the glass is usually filled to the rim. And in China, when you make a toast with your glass and say, Gampai, you have to empty it in one gulp. This action of fully emptying the glass must be done since it signifies the depth of love or friendship. People also tap the table as a way of saying thank you when someone pours for them. These are types of drinking games. Simple games like paper, scissors, rock are common and the losing person must drink from his cup. The atmosphere is said to become more enjoyable and intimate through such games. The biggest difference in the drinking cultures of the East and the West is that the people of the Becerra countries enjoy various foods with their alcoholic beverages. Such various unique dishes are prepared as side dishes for different types of alcohol. Such dishes enhance the taste of alcohol and also prevents one from getting a little too drunk. Let's find out what kind of dishes are prepared as side dishes in Korea, China, and Japan. In Japan, alcohol comes before the meal. Most appetizers served with alcohol are high in protein. In most cases, raw fish is the most popular dish. Sushi is eaten together with many drinks including chengju, whiskey or even beer. Unlike the West, where side dishes are rare, various dishes are eaten with beer. Most of them are seafoods or foods with potatoes or meat, which are high in calories. However, when drinking wine in Japan, people order their own side dishes. So, instead of a sharing culture, eating only what one wants and orders is customary. In order to get rid of the nauseating or uncomfortable feeling after a little too much, the Japanese people eat miso soup, made with Japanese traditional soybean paste. It helps the stomach feel warm and relaxed, so those who love to drink usually get over their hangovers with miso soup. Called the paradise of food, China has many varieties of different side dishes eaten with alcohol. Since meals and drinking are common, the dishes eaten with alcohol come very generous in amount and nutrition. With the famous shabu-shabu dish, 
Other special foods high in protein like tortoise soup are also served. Cow liver and squid are also popular items. Since alcohol is drank with oily foods, terrible hangovers are rare. But the most typical method to get over a hangover is tea. In Korea, meals are always eaten first before drinking. So alcohol is served only after the meal table has been cleared. Many other dishes and snacks are prepared for drinking. Other than meat dishes, the most loved side dish eaten with alcohol is a pancake-like dish made with seafood, meat, or vegetables. The typical side dishes eaten with beer are the fresh assorted fruit dishes and dried cuttlefish. The most common drinking place the street tavern called a pojang matcha. They have a vast variety of side dishes prepared. It's the perfect place for heart-to-heart -heart conversations after a long day's work. From mussel soup to cow intestines, stir-fried chicken to fried fish, various types of side dishes attract the tastes of drinkers. Various dishes are used to combat the hangover. Polak or bean sprouts, effective in counteracting alcohol's evil effects, are the main ingredients in soups, a remedy that makes the stomach feel better after eating it. The unique drinking culture of the Orient. Do you understand a little bit about it now? They say that alcohol is a gift from the gods and also a medicine to make one forget about all his worries. But you also should remember that too much alcohol could also lead you to make an unintended mistake. That's why the most important rule for the three best settled countries is trying to drink without getting too drunk. I guess all these different drinking cultures may seem a little confusing, but you can learn a little more about a country by their drinking culture. Well, I do hope you have enjoyed the show, and I'll see you again on our next Best Settled Express.